All righty. We are three minutes past the hour, so we may as well get started. Welcome, everybody, to August, not October, August the 30th, 2023, Cubert Community Meeting. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, uh, as I said, for those who have just joined, uh, if you could please um, pop your name at the top of the attendees list. Uh, it's always nice to know who attended these meetings. Um, is there anyone uh, new here that would like to take this opportunity to introduce themselves? And by new, we also can include people that have maybe lurked in this meeting before, but haven't actually introduced themselves and would like to uh, like to do that now. Hello folks, I just joined actually. <laughs> um, so my name is Daniel Crook. I'm, I've just joined the CNCF staff as well. Um, so helping out with um, individual project, um, maintainer satisfaction, as well as um, TAG and um, and TOC satisfaction with uh, the services that CNCF provides. So uh, it's my first CubeVert meeting. So happy just to listen in and, and see what's what's what. Awesome, wonderful to have you. Uh, welcome to our meeting, and uh, I guess welcome to the CNCF. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else on the call that's new and would like to introduce themselves? Alrighty. Uh, so we'll jump over to have a quick look at the 1.1 schedule. And while that loads, I'll just open up the potentially out of date events page. <clears throat> Alrighty. Still loading. We've got nothing. Um, so I think if if either Daniel or Brian on the line, maybe they can confirm that we have a 1.1 alpha that was tagged the last week. From memory, it wasn't tagged on the 22nd, but there was no reason not to tag it at the end of last week. Um, can you hear me okay? I can, yes. Yeah, I, I can confirm. I haven't, I wasn't, I wasn't here last week, so I didn't see that the alpha one that wanted to be tagged. Um, I can check with Daniel. Perfect. Thank you. Apart from that, we don't have anything here until the 12th of September. So we can close that out. Our events. Uh, this is a little out of date because the CFP to Sri Lanka has closed, but uh, you've still got a few hours to apply for the KCD Texas if you're in the area. We've also got uh, KCD Denmark and Open Source Summit Japan uh, for people who are able to make those. Um, and as usual, uh, if you're aware of, a, um, of an event or a conference that you think Qubit should be part of or you've, you've um, put a CFP into or you would like to attend, please let me know and I can add it to that wiki and we can promote it and get some uh, other people there. All righty, uh, so the only thing on our agenda at the moment um, is our Google Summer of Code mentee, Nitish Kartik is here to give a short presentation on the work that he's been doing as part of the, the initiative um, and his involvement with the community. So I'll hand over everything to Nitish. Yeah, hello, hello everyone, I'm Nitish. I'm currently doing my undergraduate studies at uh, uh, IIT Varanasi in India. So, yeah, as, uh, I hope my screen is visible. And uh, yeah, I'll be talking about what I did as a part of the GSAP program for uh, this 2023 summer. So, yeah, this project is uh, about generating second profile, automatically generating second profiles for uh, keyword, uh, word launcher pods. So, uh, so if you want to know like what Secomp is, then yeah. So Secomp is a Linux kernel facility that allows us to you know uh, filter the list of syscalls that are allowed uh, by a particular process. So yeah, and uh, so uh, container engines have support for uh, Secomp. So they allow you to um, apply a Secomp profile, and then like you'll be able to. Um, restrict the uh, 
this is list of syscalls that are allowed for a particular container so both uh, different container engines like docker although this image is specific for docker like other container engines also support that so it helps us to reduce the attack surface of containers and pods yeah yeah so we also have uh, support for sitcomp and kubert as well um, so this pr over here is uh, the one that uh, added support for sitcomp and kubert so using this feature gate uh, it's called uh, yeah kubert sitcomp profile you'll be able to specify a sitcomp profile that allows you to um, list what are the syscalls that will be allowed for a particular pod uh, so in our case that will be word launcher mode so yeah this uh, uh, this pr allows us uh, allows us to do that and uh, this project is sort of like an extension to that particular uh, to that pr uh, we can say that and uh, but the problem with that was it was also mentioned in this pr was itself so the thing is that uh, currently we are using default profiles uh, default second profiles provided by um, cras so but those will not be accurate because it, it will depend on uh, uh, the workload of the pod uh, as to like what are the syscalls that needs to be you know blocked or what or the syscalls that needs to be allowed right so yeah it might block necessary syscalls or allow unnecessary syscalls so that's the reason like uh, that why it will not be an ideal solution for us so uh, for example if we take uh, crio denies uh, user called ft as uh, it, it doesn't allow it allow us to you know have that syscall whereas like other hosts like uh, other container engines like container d yeah they allow it so this this sort of shows the difference between uh, um, the different container engines and how they treat different syscalls so yeah and the solution for us is to um, trace the syscalls that are made by the virtual launcher prod from the starting to till its end and then like uh, since we have a functional test suite like we can uh, sort of imitate what uh, the workload of virtual launcher will be till it ends and then like uh, we can use that to generate a um, you know a pretty accurate uh, second profile for the virtual launcher pod although one thing to note here is that uh, this uh, still will not uh, so this will actually depend on how like the workload that's going to be running inside the virtual launcher pod right so it, it, it's essentially going to be dependent on the vm but uh, this particular project is not it's not uh, so that consider that is not taken into consideration with this project so we are only considering uh, what are the syscalls that are made by the virtual launcher pod from the time it starts and then like it uh, uh, so we are basically using a function test suite as the uh, way to figure out like what syscalls the virtual launcher pod makes so yeah and if we uh, look at uh, the ways to some ways to trace syscalls like there are a bunch of tools available out there so we have uh, uh, sprays we have this thing we have uh, we can use ebpf as well and we have uh, yeah we have this particular tool called oc sigcom bpf tool. And we have case space. So I've, uh, as a part of this uh, project, I've explored these different technologies and then like uh, try to figure out uh, which one suits the best for us. So yeah. So there is a so uh, as I said, like uh, Kubernetes allows us to um, this uh, Kubernetes has a feature that you'll be able to apply a second profile for a uh, pod, and that automatically takes care of applying that to that particular process, and then yeah, restricts the amount of allowed syscalls and stuff, right? So uh, in this page, there is a, a all default all uh, second profiles have this uh, field called uh, action. If I can say that, so that allows you that sort of depends like what uh, what that particular profile is supposed to do. That means like if I have a default, if I have an action and then like I have a list of syscalls uh, there, then if that action is to block them, then it will block it, and if the action is to allow them, then it will allow those list of syscalls. So um, with that, like we have this action called a log action. So essentially, what it does is that it'll just uh, um, whatever list uh, list of syscalls that are mentioned in the profile, it'll log those. It'll log those to the you know audit file or the log whatever the default uh, wherever the log files are stored in that particular operating system as a default, and then like it'll log those to that file. So. Yeah, so one uh, thing to note here is that it's very it's very easy to implement, and we don't actually have a lot to maintain here when we use this approach. But the problem is that like um, the information that we are going to be getting in the logs are uh, pretty uh, limited. Uh, we won't have access to things like syscall arguments, which we might be interested in when we are uh, uh, when we want to uh, when we want to have more uh, uh, control over how we are going to filter the yeah. And yeah, there might be some difficulties in distinguishing uh, dis uh, syscalls between different pods because the thing is like when you have a, 
um when you have when you have the same second profile up, applied to two or three different pods and then like they'll all be sending the log messages to a single file and we won't really have i mean like we can have do we can do some work around but it'll be a hacky stuff uh, it'll be a hacky thing to do so because of that it'll it'll, it'll be a little bit difficult for us to distinguish this call is made by different pods so yeah so this is uh, and we also have uh, this tool called case trace I'll be sharing the links in the chat. And yeah, this tool basically allows us to, it is, is essentially defined for this purpose. Like it allows, it's a, it's written as a kubectl plugin and it allows us to trace the uh, fiscal data uh, from pods that are running within our Kubernetes cluster. So it uses S trace. So that's where the name K space. And uh, so the architecture is pretty simple. It, what it does is like whenever uh, we start it, like it attaches a tracer pod to the target pod that we're that we specifying. And it uh, starts uh, listening, it, it runs S trace inside it and then it starts listening to whatever uh, syscalls the uh, pod is making. Uh, but one problem and uh, like major problem with this approach is that, uh, so there are some synchronization issues between uh, the time when the tracer pod starts tracing and the time when uh, the target pod uh, you know, start generating this calls, right? So as soon as the, there is no option for us to um, start tracing as soon as the target part starts. So there might be some uh, syscalls that will be missing when, within that window when the target part starts and the tracer part starts tracing the syscalls made by the target part. So yeah, so there might be some, so uh, because of that, like there'll be potential loss of syscalls, which leads to an inaccurate uh, sectorm profile. So, yeah, that's one of the biggest limitations of using this approach. And yeah, we have OCA hooks. So OCA hooks allow us to uh, hook into the, you know, container runtime lifecycle and then like uh, do some stuff. So we have essentially we have pre-start, post-start. Uh, so what it allows us to do is that like, uh, if you have run CF the container runtime and then like uh, before it starts the container process, it allows us to run something just before that. So this will also give us access to information like uh, the process ID, PID namespace of the container process and stuff like that, and, uh, and a bunch of other stuff. So um, this might be something that we can use to, uh, you know, get rid of the issue that we had this with the case space, the synchronization issue. So yeah, so this might be a solution for that. So and uh, yeah, one of the one of the tools or one of the projects that made use of that is uh, this project called OCSACOM DPF. So it makes use of uh, I'll share the link in just a second. Yeah, so this project makes use of uh, OC hooks and the EBPF to uh, uh, do exactly the same thing. Like it, it allows us to trace the syscalls made by a pod. So it essentially uses uh, this uh, syscenter trace point to start tracing. And then like use, it uses uh, OC hooks to, um, you know, figure out like what is the uh, the particular point of time where the container before the container starts itself, you know what is the process ID, what the process ID is going to be, and then like you can start tracing uh, right after the pod starts. So that's that's what the different disk this makes. But uh, yeah, one problem with this is that like it doesn't have uh, only CRA CRIO supports this. Uh, container ID and other implementations do not have support for this. So that is, uh, that, that will be a limitation for us. We are, uh, so this will be dependent on the container engine. So, and that, uh, might be a limitation for us. So other approaches that I've explored, uh, are, is, uh, the last one that I explored was using Palco. So with Palco, um, there wasn't much issues. So Palco, you know, I think it's maintained by CNCF only. I'm not sure, but yeah, so it has this, uh, it's a fine, it has much more controls and it's, it's, uh, it's a larger project and, uh, Although it's uh, although its scope is uh, beyond this, but still, like uh, we can we can make use of Falco to uh, uh, trace the calls for us. So yeah, it's robust and well tested, and uh, there are no compatibility issues. And the issues that we had uh, with uh, our approach, other approaches, uh, those are not there with Falco. So uh, yeah, Falco was a better solution compared to other things. So we decided to use Falco, and also like there were some. Um, there are some other issues as well with the, the other approaches that um, are uh, not that uh, important as compared to what I've talked, but those are all documented in the documentation I have uh, written in the, in the project. I'll, I'll share the link to that soon, but yeah. So, so this is the, this is where we are hosting the project. We have the eight second generator inside uh, 
Qbert organization. And in here you can see, uh, yeah, a pretty detailed description of uh, the research that we have done and the, how, yeah, how it's being implemented. And instead of docs folder, you will be able to see, I have, I have more docs describing the things that I just talked about right now. And so, yeah, so we, we decided to build a tool that uh, basically makes use of Falco to uh, generate, to, yeah, yeah uh, that you make use of Falco to trace the syscalls and then automatically generate a second profile for that uh, particular pod. So uh, we decided to not limit it to Qbert's use case, but also to uh, make it generalized so that like other people can make use of it and stuff. So the basic architecture looks something like this. We have a CLI client and we'll have, um, these um, components that will be deployed inside uh, each node. So they'll be de deployed as daemon sets. And uh, uh, so this component has an API server running inside of them. And uh, so that will be the point of uh, control for a point of communication between the CLA client and the API server. And uh, we have, uh, so the way it works is that like uh, as soon as the, as soon as you deploy it, like it will uh, start configuring Falco inside your node. And then like it will make sure that it's, uh, uh, make sure that it, it's, it's ready to trace, right? And uh, once we send a request, once we send a request from the client to start tracing a particular pod, it can, yeah, it can, the, the API server, like we can, we'll, we'll uh, spin up a Falco process that will start tracing that uh, particular pod. And uh, the results will be stored in the data, data.json file. And then once you stop tracing, uh, we'll collect all those information, like all those logs from different nodes. And then uh, we'll, uh, the, CLI, the, the CLI client will process those and uh, generate the appropriate uh, second profile. So this is the architecture that's actually very simple. And uh, yeah, if you, if we, if we take a look at how it, uh, it look, so, so I have recorded a demo. So, uh, I hope the, the screen is visible, right? Just. We can see your, um, the, uh, okay, second generator repo. Okay, you might okay. Share so additional me... screen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just give me a second. So, how about now? Uh, are you able to see yeah. the. That looks good. Thing? Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, basically, here I have a cluster that's running a uh, cubebird and uh, so this is one of the components that I showed in the diagram. We have the syscall tracer pod that will that will be managing uh, things that are happen happening inside the cluster, and we have a um, pretty normal cluster that we uh, that I spun uh, spun up with the make cluster of command. So yeah, one thing is that like uh, as I mentioned, uh, so we have. Uh, so the, uh, we haven't figured out a way uh, to a way for the CLA client and the uh, component that's going to be running inside the cluster. We haven't figured out a way for them to communicate with each other. So right now, for the time being, uh, we have uh, used kubectl port, port, port forward to uh, allow to facilitate that, that thing. But yeah, so that, that's why we have this uh, port forwarding happening here. So here I'm basically uh, running the CLI client and I'm saying trace start and I'm giving the, so. Yeah, I'm giving, uh, I'm, I'm telling it to start tracing a pod with the label uh, cubert.io and the value of that label should be word launcher. So it essentially starts typing the word launcher pods. And now, uh, yeah, I just wait for a minute. So, uh, yeah, what I did after that was I started a, a BMA ephemeral. Yeah. I'm creating a virtual machine instance, uh, a, a simple one to, uh, yeah, to see if it uh, starts tracing those uh, syscalls made by this particular workflow support. So now I wait till uh, some time so that it starts 
it, it, it start making some sys calls as a part of the um, startup process it also makes some sys calls so those will also be recorded so we'll be able, we should be able to see them so i'm just waiting till here So now I've, I've, I've stopped tracing and uh, as you can see, like it uh, started, it, it generated the second profile using the list of syscalls that uh, WordPress had made, uh, that particular pod made till uh, the moment I stopped tracing. So yeah, this is a pretty basic uh, second profile that is generated. So the way that we'll be able to make use of this is to, we'll, we'll start tracing uh, once our, uh, uh, once our virtual answer part starts, starts, and then like we'll start uh, running st tests on that, and then like uh, yeah, till it uh, till the test end, we'll be tracing that, and then at, at the end like if we stop it, like we'll be um, we'll have the list of syscalls, and then like we'll have the uh, generated second like, profile for that virtual answer part. So maybe this can be integrated into the CI/CD pipeline, and uh, for every release, maybe we can add uh, yeah, it'll automatically generate uh, the second profile for the virtual answer part. And uh, yeah. so yeah, that that was a demo. And obviously, like there are a lot of uh, things to improve on this. This is just a sort of zero point one version of uh, the tool. So yeah, so for for example, like uh, we need to um, add support for filtering based on Cisco arguments. So yeah, we have uh, so we have Cisco. So we, we have the ability to uh, um, add the uh, argument, I mean, filter based on the arguments uh, given to us is called uh, in the second profile. So we have the ability to do that as well. And uh, we have tested that Palco with Palco will be able to uh, get the list of uh, get the uh, is called arguments as well. That information is also available with Palco. So we'll, we can make use of that and uh, we'll be able to implement this particular feature in the tool. And yeah, so there's one. So with the deployment, if you see like there is so the way we are deploying it is that uh, Palco, uh, for, for, it, it is dependent on uh, the OS distribution. For instance, like uh, we have different, uh, so for CentOS uh, stream eight, like we have different, uh, yeah. So so the installation process is a little bit different for uh, different uh, OS distributions. So essentially because the package uh, manager is different for different distributions. So that's the, uh, that's the main reason. So we'll have to have different uh, Docker images for different uh, uh, distributions. So we only have support for CentOS three made right now, but uh, I don't think it will be cheap for us to create the same for others as well. So it, since uh, only the package manager's name is going to be different. So, yeah, this is something that I uh, talked about earlier. That is, we don't really have support for. Uh, um, so this is only uh, we are only tracing the syscalls that are made by the word transfer port from the time it starts and it ends and uh, those are only the, those are limited to what we are doing within the uh, functional test suite right so if 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 you are running some vm if you are running some vm inside the word transfer port and then like uh, that vm is doing something that will still be a mix of syscalls and we are not tracing that right now so probably like what we can do in the future is to uh, you know we can add a feature where we generate uh, the second profiles based on the VM definition. We try to predict like what that what the syscalls it will uh, be making. The VM will be making based on its definition. Yeah, or uh, yeah, or the configuration of keyboard. That's yeah, that's dependent on that. So that's a different topic. It's out of the scope of this project. But yeah, so these are some a couple of improvements that we can make. And uh, so in the repository itself, I have an issue where we track the progress. So. So these are uh, things that I thought would uh, would have to be implemented. So this, the list will keep going, but yeah. So yeah, that was what I wanted to share. And uh, uh, we have the link to the project docs, which is essentially the same thing. I've already shared the link. And we also have the link to the proposal that I made. So, I'll be sharing that as well. So yeah, that's it from me. So if you, if you have any questions, then okay.
Right. That was excellent. Thank you very much for that. Uh, I'll just reiterate again. Does anyone have any questions for the teach uh, while while he's here in the field? We'll take the silence as a preemptive sign that you answered all of their questions already. Um, Thank you very much. Um, yeah, and if anyone does have any questions, um, feel free to throw them into chat. There's a bunch of people saying thank you. Um, and also you can find them, I presume, on our Slack channel. And if you've got any ideas, you can put them in the repo. We'll move on. Uh, conformance test on ARM64. Howard, I'm guessing that's uh, that's yours. Uh, yes, so I cannot see your sharing screen. Okay, cool. Uh, just a minute. All right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I I mentioned this issue in the last week's uh, uh community conference uh weekly meeting. Uh, but I haven't got any feedback on this uh and also i i i want to thanks uh daniel uh, and uh brian helped me to uh, merge the bootstrap legacy um uh, pr and now we have multi arc bootstrap legacy uh, uh image uh, so the first issue, uh, uh, we can fix it by running conformance test in uh, Bootstrap Legacy. Um, and now we have a second problem that uh, we, do, uh, we don't have the R alpha pi with testing tooling uh, virtual machine on M64. And the build tool, uh, 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 I have make some investigation on in it, uh, but uh, I send this pro uh, project to my or IP group to review if we can make contribution to this project. Uh, they have some concern um, because they think uh, this project may have some depend QMU dependency and may related to uh, some um, IP. So I'm not allowed to make contribution to this project for now. Uh, so um, I'm not sure if we can build the uh, alpha pi with test tooling man manually um, to make conformance test works on ARM64. Or, or we have to wait, um, like we get the permission to make contribution to the uh, alpha pi build tooling project, then use the pro CICD pipeline to build the ARM64 uh, virtual uh, alpha pi virtual machine. Uh, I'm not sure if I can get the permit and uh, how long I can get the permit. Hi Howard. Uh, Hi. I, I'm wondering how many how many tests uh, does use the Alpine image? Uh, 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 here uh, we have twenty tests in conformance tests. Uh, after I skip or alpha pi test, uh, uh, we only run eight. Uh, we only have eight passed on M sixty four and. Uh, uh, 12 tests uh, are skipped. Okay, I, I, because we are only talking about conformant tests and they are so little in a, in an amount. Yeah, uh, I would maybe propose that we skip or just change the image, right, for Fedora, yeah. because Fedora should be supported by ARM, right? Yes, yes. For ARM. Yeah. 
So we change those those tests to Fedora uh, virtual machine, right? Yeah, just just change the change the image for the test, which uh, which you need. So I'm not sure what, what exactly they are, but yeah, we just propose a PR uh, to change the Alpine to Fedora. Uh, we should have everything we what we need there, and it should for work out of the box. Okay, I can give it a try. Perfect. Okay. And also, uh, uh, we have a uh, initial enablement of conformance tests. So, uh, do you have time to review it? It's yeah, a, definitely. Yeah, it's a small PR. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not, not this one. I run write down in the uh, meeting notes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this one. Gotcha. So then, um, how would you don't need us to look at ten three zero three now? I uh, guess yes. This PR. Yeah. But, um, and Luba, this is the one you're going to look at? Yeah. yeah. Have a look. Thanks, Luba. Thank you, Howard. Uh, was that everything that you needed, Howard? Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you. We'll jump ahead. And if anyone has anything to add to the agenda or the open floor, we will circle back there just to make sure that we haven't missed anything. Um, we just have a couple of things. There's one pull request that I noticed hasn't been looked at. This was about uh, correcting something to do with user defined kubelet directories. Uh, still hasn't been looked at. Um, can you see me, Andrew? I sure can. Thank you. Thank you. That's now done. Now, a couple of things on the mailing list. Uh, one was from uh, uh, mispronounce the name without seeing it again. Okay, uh, Prita, who I believe is on the call. Yes. Oh, uh, would you like to uh, quickly cover what this uh, message is about? Um. Yeah. So basically. Uh, there have been recent reports of when people are trying to force stop their stuck VMs, it, it's not actually immediately halting the VMs, so it gets stuck in the terminating state. Um, so Itamar was looking into this, and uh, essentially the way that the grace period argument works in uh, the vert CTL stop is different from how it works in uh, kubectl. Um, and so essentially the idea is to update the description of the grace period flag to more accurately reflect its actual behavior. And then uh, currently the force flag and the grace period flag are redundant. So we propose um, modifying the force argument so that uh, the user can specify force argument if they want to uh, fully immediately kill the VM rather than uh, start a graceful shutdown of the VM. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so if anyone has uh, comments, questions, or dissent, uh, there is a email thread and an issue linked there uh, for you to voice those opinions. The other one was, uh, again, kind of a um, raising awareness of a PR checklist. And payments push through. So this is now part of our um, PR template, uh, which everyone will see when they go through PR. Uh, oh, that's my unhelpful comment. 
it's a series of, uh, as he reinforces, non-enforcing checklist. Um, so these are things that are good to think about, but in um, they're not mandatory. And we do happen to have one, which so we can look at the checklist in the wild. Um, one from Jed. And so it's here under the special notes and above the release note. Um, yeah, all, all the all the I guess peripheral things, um, which can often get left by the wayside because we get kind of get um, tunnel vision on the PR that we're reviewing. So this is of course good for the author to think about, for the reviewer to think about, for the approver to think about. Um, and I think as well, conveniently, this PR doesn't have any attention on it. Um, Jed on the call. Jed, did you want us to look at this now? Or are you still waiting for David to come back to you? Um, yeah, no, anyone could look at it. Um, I, I don't fully understand the rate limiting system on the queues, but there's, there was definitely an issue there where we multiplied by time dot second twice, which means instead of seconds, you get years. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Um, I don't know how it works today with that um, thing being uh, years instead of seconds. But yeah, uh, I, I, th this is an obvious issue, so I fixed it, but we probably need to look at this code more closely, is what I'm trying to say. All right, 158, yeah. Um, uh, is there anyone on the call that um, that might be able to help with this? Fair enough. Uh, in which case, I guess we can wait for to, um, David to respond. Um, yep, so that's all for the mailing list review and the bug scrub. We've only got one bug that I could see. So once again, thank you to all of our reviewers and our approvers who take care of uh, the bugs and the PRs. Make sure that this part of the call is thankfully very short. Um, yeah, we've got a uh, repeated error for this person installing Cuba 1.0, uh, rate limited re for sub resources API. Is anyone uh, familiar with this error and might have, um, might be able to help this user? Could we ask if the if the installation is blocked? Uh, I, I mean, I mean, that would be an assumption of mine. But uh, you know what they say about assumptions? Yeah, uh, we can do that. Well, so you're, you're suggesting that this might be the installation might go through, but this just might be looping in the log for an unrelated reason. I'm suggesting that the error can be there, but still everything can work. Uh, we definitely seen this in the past. Uh, I'm trying to find a PR which which fixed one of those issues. Um, give me a second. Okay. All righty. the PR in the in the chat. Awesome. Right. All right, I can follow that up outside of me so I don't um, take everyone's time. Uh, no one's added anything, uh, which means we have come to the end of the meeting. Uh, does anyone have anything uh, last minute that I'd like to add or raise before we finish for the day slash week? All righty. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining. Thank you very, very much for Nitish for uh, presenting about the GSOC project. Um, and thanks again for everyone who takes care of the, the bugs and the pull requests and the reviews. Have a lovely day, have a lovely weekend, and we will see you next week. Thanks, everybody.
Thank you. See you. Bye-bye.